All right, hey, what's up, Daryl? All right, so this is Adobe Premiere Pro, and what you're looking at right now is actually my current AMV that just hit beta. Hi. Oh, oh, there, yep, there you go. <laughs> There's player two in the background. All right, so anyway, uh, what we were talking about here is you have the source file up here, you got the program file, here's the orange box I was telling you about, it's gonna show you what's highlighted. Then you got your project down here and you have your timeline down here. Now, as I was kind of telling you, uh, I'll kind of, actually, I think I'll just go over everything again. All right, so you got your source file and your effects controls up here. This is where you're gonna get into more advanced stuff later in, but for your first AMV, you don't need to worry about the effects panel. You don't even really need to worry about this panel except for music. Now, as you see down here, my song that I'm using is very, very, very cut up. And if you get even closer in here, you'll notice that in spots like right here, there's no cut on the song, but I have scenes changing right there. So you have a lot of different things here, but what we can do here is I was gonna show you, if you put this file up here and you can scroll through this, as you'll notice on this little timeline, this gray spot, here's the entire song, but this is the spot that you have uh, hold on one second here. Uh, okay, I hope that didn't change anything. I had to mute Ventrilo again. Maybe I'll just change channels real quick. There we go. Okay, so hopefully that didn't change the recording. I'll have to take a look at that later. If you put this volume or sound clip up here, you can zoom in as well. I, I use hotkeys all the time. So you have, for a basic editor, you have V for your selection tool you have C for cuts, you'll see that's a little razor blade, and then you'll have R for the rate changer. So, let's uh, go back to that one, the pointer. I, if you go up into the song, and you got your little marker here, this is where the music's changing. Spacebar is going to be your play and stop, that's uh, something you'll get used to very, very, very easy. But what you can do for the song, as you can see, I have all these cuts. If you go up here and you press M, a little marker is going to show up. Now, you can always clear all markers, clear selected markers. You can do stuff like that if you want to. But see, that marker then you can also change. Now, at the bottom on the timeline down here, you see this little marker? That's the one we're working with. So see, that moves where I move this top one. And then when you get to a spot in the song that you're like, I want a scene change right here. This is a beat change right there. I want that. What I personally do is I'll change to the cutting tool. I'll go down here and you see it snaps to that marker even if you're a little off, you can go to there and cut it. Bingo. Next thing you'll need to know, control Z is undo. So I see bam. Control bam. If I want to put it back on, control shift Z puts it back in. So you got undo and redo. So that's what I do for these songs. Uh, now I have this yellow box on the timeline down here, plus and minus next to your backspace on your keyboard. Very, very, very handy for zooming in and zooming out. Once again, hotkeys. Now, uh, what I like to do sometimes is if I'm on a song and I want to catch the whole song, I'll go down here and I can click and drag this to change the view exactly to where I have just the song on my timeline right here, and I don't have to look at all this other stuff. And then when you're down here, if you press spacebar, you'll see it start playing in your top right menu. Got all the hotkeys on here. If you ever want to change these hotkeys, you go up to the top here, and you can do all kinds of different little changes Oh, where is it? Maybe it wasn't there. Oh, here it is. Button editor. So, so you can put in different buttons into this area. I thought there was a button editor for this. You'd probably have to change that somewhere in the menus up top. Not important. So cancel that. The next thing to know is when you, oops, see like right there, I just tried to hit plus 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 to zoom in, but I am, well, nothing's highlighted. So I can't zoom in on my, oh, there it is. Okay, so see it's zooming in up there and I don't need it up there gonna highlight this box and now we're gonna zoom back in. So what I did is I, let's say I cut the song right here. Let's move this, this is distracting. We're gonna close that. Uh, I heard that open, we're gonna close that. So we're gonna close those things. <clears throat> Something else you can do if you wanna say move this screen to, or this screen to, or this screen to a different monitor, you can go up here and hit undock frame or undock panel and then you can move those around onto a separate monitor if you want. Uh, personally, I'm so used to using one screen that that's what I've been doing right now. And when you're in here looking at stuff, if you really want to see the full screen, if you hit control tilde, 
Uh, the tilde is the key right next to the number one. Control tilde, bam, full screen. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna change it back to that. But anyway, if you cut the song like I do, you can then, I'm gonna select the pointer, you can click and drag the video clips and it'll snap and show you those uh, little white arrows that pop up right there. It'll show you it's snapping straight to that spot that happens to be the song cut and the video clip right there. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. You see here, this is my AMV that I'm working on. You have different timelines here. I personally use one for audio. I use three for video because there'll be some spots like right here where you have this stuff that I'll get into next. The P button, P for pointer, you'll see a little pen pop up. That's the next thing you'll maybe want to get into. That's for fading. So if you have like right here, I'm clicking and dragging this little yellow bar. Uh, if you see that dot show up, you can move this dot here and you have a second dot that you can have in different spots as well. So I have this scene playing and then it's gonna fade into the next one. And if you want to, you can put another dot here and there, see then you have a cross fade. And at one point, they're both dark. Personally, you know, I, I, I do both. So you can use whatever you want. There I'm hitting Control Z and it's setting it back to the way it was. So you have this second video line, first video line, and third video line. The way Adobe Premiere works is the top line is always the most predominant. So for example, if you have, say, two clips on top of one another here, it's gonna play, if you tell it to at least, I mean, I'm sure you can change it. Uh, I mean, you can lock these tracks if you want to, which is always nice, but the way this works is it's gonna show the top track. So see, like right here, this is 100% opacity on both of these video clips, but it's showing the top one, even though this one's here. So, for example, let me change this back to where things were. Okay. So now, every once in a while, I'll have something like this, where it has this top screen, or top video clip, and then it's gonna crossfade into the second one, and then the third one down there on the bottom. The reason I have that is because I have this clip overlaps both of these other clips right here. And since it does that, it has to be in the middle with the different fades so that this one can fade into this one and then this one can fade into this one. So the P, the pointer tool for fading, pretty important. If you're using V, which is your selection tool, you can use V to stretch and drag clips if you want to cut them. There's different ways to do that. Uh, what I'm kind of getting at here is if you have, say, C. Okay, let's say this scene, I want it to stop right here. You can do two things. You can either cut it, press V, select that stop spot, and hit delete. So that's one way to do it. Or, redo that, I want it to stop there. If you're on the marker tool, you can just go to the end of the clip, click and drag, and bam, you can drag it to the spot right there. So there's two ways to cut and change your clips. The next thing to know is if you press R, you have the rate change tool. Uh, you'll notice the pointer has that red cross through it, the red strike through it. That means you can't do anything where the mouse is right there. You have to be on a certain spot for it to work. The rate change, you'll see this one is set to 107%. So that means main speed is 100%. This is going 7% faster. So this is a little bit faster. What you can do is you can hit R, you can click and drag, and see now it's at 300%. So now it goes really quick. So we're gonna redo that. We're gonna press minus. Uh, personally, what I like to do in an AMV is I will have all of my video clips on this side. I will click and drag, here, let me uh, move this over here to the end. I will click and drag Maybe I won't click and drag. There we go. I'll click and drag this whole thing over here. Now it's gonna first come up with the video and the audio. If you put it on the one or two, it's also gonna depend where it puts the audio. If you have two audio tracks and you put the video on two, it'll throw the audio down on two as well, the audio too. But what I'll do is I'll put the video on here. I will wonder why it's doing that. That doesn't make sense. Did I lock something?
what the hell? All right, well, usually what I'll do, I don't know why it's doing it this way. Uh, usually what I do is I throw both of these on here, I select the audio track, and then I delete the audio track and just keep the video. I don't know why. I don't know what I pressed that would... Huh, well, that's another way to do it. You can lock the video one, and then you can delete the audio. So then you can bring it back. So anyway, what I do in my AMVs, I will throw all of my projects, all of my audio, uh, or audio and video, onto one, one uh, track, onto one timeline. Then I will go through very meticulously and cut out pieces I want to use, cut, 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 delete pieces I don't want to use, and... Okay, we're gonna get rid of that. And then you'll, that's where you'll see all of this stuff. So I have all of this extra video stuff that I wanted to put in the AMV that I couldn't fit. But it's all here, it's all cut up into little itty bitty pieces, and that's all sitting right here. Then what I personally do is I will also save these projects multiple times. I will have like this one here, I have the Black Rock Shooter, I have the Backup, and I have the Beta. I don't want to save this one because I've been doing crazy stuff with this one, but that's the basics that I can kind of tell you right now. I'm going to stop this video because I don't want to go in too long and take a long time to upload, and I will talk to you soon.